Hello and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome to my channel and welcome to my series Where Are You? In this series I am solemnly covering missing persons cases to give them cases media coverage and get them out there and you never know we may just get somebody home if you're new to my channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn on that bell so you're notified every single time that i post don't forget to follow my social media and i now have a patreon as well if you wish to support me over there you get crazy little perks like extra videos and access to my private social media so yeah, if you're interested in that, the link is in the description below. So just before we get into today's video, I'm going to give my usual disclaimer, as I do before any true crime video. I don't mean any disrespect to anybody that I talk about in the case or anybody related to the case. I'm simply just covering this case to give it awareness and media attention online. And all the information that I used in this video, I found online. Today we are going to be talking about the mysterious disappearance of William Tyrrell. William Tyrrell was born on the 26th of June 2011 and he was born to his parents in Sydney, Australia. Have you finished? No, I don't. Lick your fingers, lick your hair. <laughs> Tyrrell 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 Tyrrell
where, where, where's he gone? She said, he was, he was here five minutes ago, here five minutes ago. Still sitting down. Yep. Right? I said, well, where's he gone? She said, I can't find him. So I then, but I started to go down here. I was calling his name. Were you motion? Sorry? Were, were you motion this way, do you think? Or she actually identified she, she said that he was, he was last seen around here. Yep. But I thought, okay, well, you know, if he was down at the road, you possibly would have seen him. So um, he's, he's, in, he's in his bright clothes. Je William's parents started to knock on neighbours' doors to see if anybody had seen what direction William went in or knew where he was. And when they didn't locate him, they started to get extremely worried as there was a forest directly facing his grandmother's house. And they was worried that he could have wandered into that forest and maybe got lost. At 10.56 a.m. William's mother rang 000 which is Australian's police emergency number and she officially reported William missing. Police emergency, this is Simone. Yeah, hi, my son is missing. He's three and a half. Um, sorry. What's your address? Benaroon Drive, yep. Kendall. Okay, Benaroon Drive in Kendall. Yes. Alright, I'm just going to bring that up on my map. I won't be a moment. Thank you. How long has he been missing? I th well, I think, well, we've been looking in for him now for about 15 or 20 minutes, but okay. I thought it could be five, it could be longer, because he was just playing around here. We heard him and then we heard nothing. Okay. Police arrived at the home in Kendall very quickly and over 200 volunteers started to search for William. They searched the area around the house and they also searched the dense forest. And this search went late on into the night and there was still no trace of William. Police even used helicopters and motorbikes as part of this search, but there was no trace of William at all. On the 14th of September, police started to search rivers, lakes and dams in the area. They wanted to make sure that they covered every possible scenario, but still this search brought up absolutely nothing. Hundreds of police officers, state emergency services, fire engines and even members of the public turned out to search for William day and night. But unfortunately, there was never anything found. Police did say that if William was anywhere in the bushland, that he wouldn't possibly be alive now. It had been five days and the temperatures in the day are very hot and he wouldn't have had any food or water. So a possibility is that he just succumbed to the elements. The possibility of William leaving on his own were becoming slimmer and slimmer. On the 21st of September, nine days after he was reported missing, police decided to scale back the investigation. They said they solely wanted to concentrate on significant evidence that they had found in the area. A police sniffer dog was used to try and track down maybe what direction William went in but this sniffer dog only could pick up his scent in the back garden so that made police conclude that he must have got into a vehicle and it was making the possibility of him being abducted greater. In January 2015, the police seemed to have their eyes on their first suspect. William Spedding had attended the grandparents' house a couple of days before William's disappearance and he was there to repair the washing machine. I'm sorry if you can hear any background noise, I will try and edit that out. People seem to forget that I'm filming every time that I go to film and it's just totally unavoidable. And the fact that he had been in the home in the recent days to the disappearance, this made him a suspicious person in this case. His home and shop were searched, but as far as I can see, nothing significant was found as police never released anything. People still pointed their finger at William Spedding and they was adamant that he was the person that took William. He posted a message online protesting in his, his innocence and pleading for anybody to go to the police with information. Hello, I'm Bill Spedding. My wife Margaret and I offer the Tyrrell family 
our sincere commiserations in the tragic event of William's disappearance. I wish to state that I have had no involvement whatsoever in the disappearance of William Tyrrell. I have noted in the media that some events have been reported inaccurately. I wish to clarify those details. I first attended the Tyrrell House on Tuesday the 9th September 2014 to repair a washing machine. I returned to complete the repair of the washing machine on Thursday the 18th September 2014. I have not been in the Tyrrell House or to the Tyrrell House or to the street before, between or after these dates. Anyone whom I appeal to anyone who may have any further information to urge them to contact Crime Stoppers on 1300 333 000. Thank you very much. In a bid to try and figure out what happened to William, police pleaded with the public. They said anybody who was in a kilometre of the area on that day to get in touch. In March 2015, the Homicide Squad started an investigation for a possible body in the forest that it was thought that William could have gone into and they was tipped off by a member of the public but nothing was discovered in this search. So William's parents did not talk publicly about William going missing and this caused a lot of people to point the finger at them and get very very suspicious. But in April 2015, they made their first public appearance and it soon became clear why they had kept themselves so private all this time. William's parents were in fact William's foster parents and they had looked after him since he was nine months old. William's biological parents had a lot of issues with domestic violence, there was a lot of violence in the home and this made the state think that William would be better in foster care. Once this information came to light, the public decided to point the finger and question William's biological parents. The police did do a full investigation into his biological parents. They said there was no evidence to suggest that their biological parents had anything to do with William's disappearance. In June 2015, there was reports of a Spider-Man toy being found in the previous suspect's car. So that's William Spedding's car. Now, police have never denied or confirmed this, and they say they look into every single lead. That's the only information they give out on that report. In September 2015, a year after William's disappearance, police released an appeal for two cars. Now, police knew about these two cars for at least a year, but they decided to keep that information to themselves. Now, police like to sit on certain information and not release it just in case it's important. Or, in this case, they said they kept it to themselves so that people wouldn't decide to get rid of the cars if they was involved. If you understand what I mean. They didn't want these cars to be destroyed or extremely cleaned or anything like that. They didn't want to let the people know that they was after them cars. And it was revealed that these cars were in the street at the time of William's disappearance. Now what made these cars stand out is that William's grandmother lived on a very secluded street like I said at the beginning of the video and it was a cul-de-sac. So if you was to make your way down this road you would one, either make a dead turn, two, have to be going to somebody's house or three live there you would need a reason to go down the street and that's why police put this appeal out to the public because if anybody was just making a wrong turn they would know that they made a wrong turn go to police say oops i made a wrong turn but nobody came forward it was later released that these cars were actually seen on the street at the time of william's disappearance and witnesses described that they had never seen these cars in the street before. Towards the end of September, police managed to seize the white station wagon, but it was never revealed if anything was found or if anything was found of any significance. In February 2016, Williams' parents put out another plea for information. They asked people not to give up hope and to continue searching for William and at this time police were still searching as if William was alive. 
On the second anniversary of William's disappearance, the government put out a £1 million reward for any information leading to William being found. In September 2017, the police spoke about this case for the first time in 12 months and they said they wanted people to stay on the lookout and to call them if they had any information. And the last update that we have for this case is from June 2018 and that is nearly a year ago. Police announced that they were doing a full forensic examination of the area that William disappeared and also the forest surrounding it. And they said that this search would take approximately four weeks. Now nothing's been released since, it's possible they could have information or they couldn't. We just don't know until police comment on that. That is all the information surrounding what happened in William's disappearance and in the years since. It's such a shame that there's been no significant information and his family just still don't know where he is and it's so heartbreaking that they just want to know answers, they just want to know where he is. So if anybody has any information that they think might be relevant to this case I will leave the contact numbers down below share this video you never know who might just see it and you never know who may just remember something that might just trigger this case so i just want to apologize at the end of this video there was background noise people just seem to forget that i'm filming and tend to not be quiet which is like irritating but it's done <laughs> and the lighting has changed a few times because i had to get up and fix my camera which is just brilliant Things just didn't want me to film today. But yeah, I'm glad I'm quite filmed. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a massive thumbs up. Subscribe. And I shall see you in my next video. Bye.